The Lord's Prayer, often recited by millions of believers around the world, transcends a mere sequence of memorized words, emerging as a profound model of divine communication that Jesus Christ taught his disciples. This precept is not only a central element in Christian practice, but also a window into the essence of the relationship between the human and the divine, illuminating the way to a genuine and transforming dialogue with God. Understanding the Lord's Prayer requires an appreciation of its context and purpose. Located at the heart of the Sermon on the Mount, this prayer exemplifies Jesus' instruction on how his followers should approach God with sincerity, humility, and an open heart. He challenged the religious norm of his time, which often leaned toward public and ostentatious prayers, pointing to a practice that values intimacy and personal truth. Rather than regard the Our Father as a mantra or a magic formula, it is essential to perceive him as a guide to authentic engagement with God. Each sentence of the prayer is loaded with meaning and intention, inviting the speaker to reflect on his life, his actions, and his relationship with the Creator and others around him. By saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, we acknowledge our shared sonship under the fatherhood of God, establishing a ground of equality and brotherhood among all believers. Prayer moves forward, inviting us to sanctify the name of God, to yearn for the coming of His kingdom, and to align our will with His, demonstrating a deep desire to live according to the divine purposes and not ours. By asking for daily bread, we recognize our dependence on God for daily needs, both physical and spiritual. And by asking for forgiveness, we are reminded of the importance of mercy and the need to forgive others reflecting the grace we have received. By contemplating, let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil, we are encouraged to seek strength and protection in God in the face of challenges and adversity. And in concluding with, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever, we reaffirm our faith in the divine sovereignty and majesty, surrendering all our cares, praises, and life itself into the hands of God. Therefore, the prayer of the Our Father stands out as an invitation to reflection and spiritual growth, encouraging believers to engage in an intimate and meaningful conversation with God, where the heart speaks louder than words, and life becomes a reflection of prayer lived. The prayer of the Our Father, situated in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13, within the rich and profound context of the Sermon on the Mount, is one of the most precious and fundamental teachings that Jesus offered to his disciples and by extension, to all Christians. This passage not only presents a prayer formula, but also instills a broader understanding of communication with God, emphasizing essence and sincerity about eloquence or excessive repetition. The Sermon on the Mount, which extends from chapter 5 to 7 of Matthew, is considered one of the most influential and transformative discourses of Jesus, addressing themes ranging from the Beatitudes to the ethics of the Kingdom of Heaven. In this context, the Lord's Prayer comes as a culminating moment where Jesus clearly defines how his followers should approach God in prayer, distancing himself from the prayer practices of the Pharisees, who preferred to be seen and admired for their long prayers in public places. Jesus proposes an intimate and genuine approach. He encourages his hearers to seek a secret place where prayer becomes a private and sincere dialogue with the Heavenly Father away from human glances and judgments. The Lord's Prayer begins with a direct address to God as our Father, immediately establishing a personal and community relationship with the divine. This approach not only recognizes the fatherhood and closeness of God, but also highlights brotherhood among those who pray, uniting them as children of the same Father. Every subsequent petition in the Lord's Prayer, from the sanctification of God's name to the coming of His kingdom, from the realization of his will to the daily provision, from forgiveness of sins to protection from evil, reflects fundamental aspects of Christian life and human dependence on divinity. These requests reveal a deep understanding that spiritual life, physical needs, moral purification, and spiritual liberation are intertwined in the relationship with God. In summary, in the biblical context of the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer serves as a capsule of Jesus' teaching on prayer encapsulating the vision of a relationship with God based on sincerity, simplicity, and depth, away from empty formalisms and mechanical repetitions. It invites us to reflect on the nature of our communication with God, 
emphasizing the quality and authenticity of prayer as the true essence of religious practice. Jesus' teaching against hypocrisy in prayer, a fundamental part of his doctrine, resonates with a call to authenticity and depth in communication with God. At a time when religious practices were often saturated with ostentation and exhibitionism, Jesus introduced a revolutionary paradigm that challenged established values, emphasizing the importance of a personal and intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father. In the context of the Sermon on the Mount, particularly in Matthew 6, Jesus openly criticizes those who make their prayers a public spectacle, seeking people's admiration rather than communion with God. He contrasts this practice with the true purpose of prayer, a moment of genuine and personal connection with God, away from judgmental eyes and social expectations. Jesus exhorts his followers to pray in secret, in a reserved place, where the focus is exclusively on the relationship with God, not influenced by the need for human approval. This guidance not only serves as an antidote to vanity, but also as an invitation to explore the depth of one's soul in a space of vulnerability and sincerity before God. Jesus' critique of hypocrisy in prayer goes beyond the mere physical location or visibility of practice. It touches on the essence of the intention and attitude with which it approaches God. True prayer, as taught by Jesus, emerges from the heart and reflects an honest surrender without adornment or artifice, a mirror of the soul that seeks God for who He is, not how practice can benefit the public image of the speaker. This teaching emphasizes that the quality of our prayer is not measured by its length, eloquent words, or external recognition, but by the sincerity and intent with which we address God. Jesus introduces the notion that God knows the needs of his children even before they ask, reinforcing that prayer is not a transaction or a spectacle, but an intimate and true dialogue with the Creator. By promoting a prayer free of hypocrisy, Jesus not only redefines religious practice, but also invites each person to reflect on the authenticity of his or her own faith. The challenge is to cultivate a relationship with God that is as real and sincere in the community as it would be under public scrutiny, a practice that purifies, transforms, and brings the believer closer to the heart of God. Jesus' guidance to pray in private, highlighted in his Sermon on the Mountain, brings a transformative perspective on the practice of prayer, underlining the importance of intimacy and authenticity in the relationship with God. When Jesus instructs his followers to enter their rooms and close the door to pray to the Father in secret, he is inviting them into a space of depth and truth, far from distractions and outward appearances. This instruction reflects the understanding that prayer is not a spectacle for human observation, but a sincere dialogue with the Heavenly Father. In directing prayer to the private realm, Jesus emphasizes that the value of prayer does not lie in public perception, but in the quality of communication with God, who sees beyond appearances and reaches the heart. Praying in secret is an invitation to take off your masks and face God with all honesty and vulnerability. It is in the back of the room, far from the eyes of others, that the soul finds freedom to express its doubts, fears, joys, and most sincere gratitudes, establishing a genuine connection with the Creator. In this sacred space, prayer transcends the mere recitation of words and becomes a true encounter with God where silence speaks and the heart listens. The promise that God who sees in secret will reward openly should not be understood as an incentive to the pursuit of earthly rewards, but as a reminder that faithfulness and sincerity do not go unnoticed in the divine eyes. The rewards of an authentic prayer practice are often internal and spiritual, reflected in peace, clarity, personal growth, and a deeper and more trusting relationship with God. By practicing prayer in the secret, the believer allows himself to be shaped by the presence of God, learning to hear His voice and to align His will with the divine will. In this process, the heart is transformed and the fruits of this transformation are manifested in the life of the individual in a visibly and tangible way, witnessing to the action of God who, although operated in secret, is revealed in every aspect of existence. Thus secret prayer is not an escape from the world, but a strengthening of the soul to face it, a source of power and direction that flows from intimate communion with the Father. 
ensuring that outer life reflects the reality of inner life nourished by God's presence. Prayer, in essence, is an authentic dialogue with God, a two-way street where we speak and listen, expressing our most intimate truth while remaining open to the divine voice. This honest and open dialogue transcends the barriers of superficiality, inviting us to a genuine relationship with the Creator. In reflecting on prayer as an authentic exchange, we are called to reconsider our oral practices, recognizing that true communication with God goes beyond mere decorated words or empty rituals. In an authentic dialogue with God, there is no place for pretensions or masks. It is a space where the heart opens and all facets of the human being, his weaknesses, doubts, thanks and praises, are exposed before the knowing and compassionate gaze of the Father. This form of prayer allows us to be who we really are, recognizing our vulnerability and our intrinsic need for God. In this context, prayer becomes a process of discovery and learning. We discover more about ourselves, about our deepest desires and more hidden fears as we place them before God. We learn to listen, not only with our ears, but with our hearts, attentive to the direction, comfort, correction, or encouragement God can give us. Thus, prayer shapes our character, aligns our values, and transforms our lives in a profound and meaningful way. Authenticity in prayer also teaches us about the nature of God. As we engage in genuine dialogue, we begin to more clearly understand His character, His grace, His unconditional love, and His will for our lives. We learn to trust God, not as a distant or indifferent being, but as a loving Father who desires the best for His children. Therefore, an authentic dialogue with God requires that we abandon formalities and enter into prayer with open and sincere hearts. In doing so, we not only enhance our relationship with God, but also allow this genuine communication to influence and enrich every aspect of our lives. Ultimately, authentic prayer invites us to live in a constant transparency before God, allowing His light to penetrate and transform our innermost realities. Jesus' practice of seeking moments of solitude to pray highlights the depth of intimacy He cultivated with the Father. This example, recorded in the Gospels, serves as a vital teaching for all who wish to deepen their relationship with God. By retiring to isolated places, Jesus not only found peace far from the crowds, but also demonstrated the importance of nurturing a personal and intimate connection with God, free from distractions and interruptions. Stillness, as Jesus teaches us, is not merely the absence of external noise, but a state of attention and openness to God. In these moments of solitude, prayer transcends verbal communication and becomes an encounter of the heart with the divine, a space where the soul can rest, listen, and be transformed by the presence of God. The search for isolation for devotional practice underlines a fundamental truth. Intimacy with God requires time, dedication, and the conscious decision to move away from the demands and chaos of everyday life. This model of intimacy that Jesus lived and taught is an invitation to an inner dive, where the believer can experience God more deeply and meaningfully. It is in this sacred silence that we can strip ourselves of our personal agendas, concerns, and pretensions, presenting ourselves before God in our truest essence. Stillness becomes the fertile ground where the voice of God can be heard clearly, guiding, comforting, and renewing our strength. Moreover, intimacy with God cultivated in solitude has repercussions that echo in our daily life. It strengthens us to meet challenges, inspires us to act in accordance with divine values, and transforms us into more effective instruments of God's love and grace in the world. The regular practice of seeking God in stillness shapes our character, aligns our wills with His, and fills us with peace and clarity. In short, Jesus' example invites us to value and seek our own solitude with God, recognizing that in this silence and isolation, we can find a profound and transforming intimacy with the Creator. Just as Jesus strengthened and guided Himself in His mission through these moments, so too can we find direction, purpose, and renewal in following in His footsteps, dedicating time and heart to God's presence in stillness. Sincerity in prayer is an essential pillar for genuine communication with God. This authenticity transcends words, 
and touches the essence of what it means to have a true relationship with the Creator. Sincerity in our prayers reflects an open heart, willing to expose itself before God with all its virtues and weaknesses. This honest and unpretentious approach to prayer is fundamental to cultivating a deep communion with God, allowing our experience of faith to be not only a series of rituals but a living and transformative dialogue. The Bible is full of examples that emphasize the importance of sincerity in prayer. Figures like David in his Psalms display a wide range of human emotions before God, from joy and gratitude to despair and repentance. This honest expression of feelings and thoughts is what characterizes a sincere prayer, where there is no need to hide or embellish what we really feel or think. Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry also emphasized the need for sincere prayer. He criticized the Pharisees for their empty, ostentatious prayers directed more toward human approval than toward relationship with God. In contrast, Jesus taught his disciples to pray simply and honestly, highlighting the Lord's Prayer as a model of sincere communication with the Father. Sincerity in prayer invites us to pour out our hearts before God, trusting that He accepts us as we are, knows our limitations and longs for a relationship based on truth. When we pray sincerely, we are not just reciting words, but participating in an authentic exchange with God, which can transform our inner being, heal our wounds and guide our steps. Moreover, sincerity in prayer allows us to experience true communion with God. This communion is reflected in a life of deeper and rooted faith, where decisions, attitudes, and words are influenced by this honest and open relationship with the Creator. Ultimately, sincerity in prayer is not just about how we communicate with God, but about how we allow this communication to shape who we are and how we live. Therefore, as we cultivate sincerity in our prayers, we open our hearts to a more intimate and true relationship with God, allowing His presence and will to manifest clearly in our lives, transforming us according to His image and purpose. The relational nature of prayer transcends the notion of a mere ritual or religious duty. It represents a unique opportunity to share life with God, expressing our most intimate emotions, thoughts, and experiences. This perspective transforms prayer from a monotonous practice into a dynamic and living dialogue, where human hearts enter into communion with the Divine Heart, revealing the essence of prayer as a deeply personal and interactive relationship with God. Understanding prayer as a relational act implies recognizing God not only as an attentive listener, but as an active participant in our life. He is not a distant or disinterested God. Rather, He is a Father who longs to hear about our days, to know our thoughts and feelings, and to interact with us in a meaningful way. Through prayer, we are invited to bring to God not only our requests and needs, but also our joys, sorrows, doubts, and gratitude making Him a constant confidant in our journey. This emotional and spiritual exchange in prayer enriches our relationship with God. By expressing our most intimate emotions, we allow God to truly know us as we are, without masks or pretensions. This vulnerability is the key to genuine intimacy, where God not only hears, but also speaks, consoles, guides, and transforms. By sharing our life with Him, we discover unwavering support a source of unconditional love, and a wise orientation to daily challenges. Moreover, relational prayer teaches us to listen to God, to discern His voice amid the noise of the world. It trains us to be sensitive to His direction, making room in our hearts and minds to receive His insights, comfort, and corrections. This ongoing dialogue shapes our character, aligns our desires to His, and strengthens our faith. In short, Prayer as a relational experience transforms our understanding of God and ourselves. It teaches us that we are not alone in our journey, but accompanied by a God who cares deeply and wants to share every aspect of our existence. Thus, prayer becomes not only a moment of petition, but a sacred space of communion, where life is shared and relationships are deeply rooted in divine love. The sanctification of God's name is a fundamental principle in many religious traditions around the world. Recognizing the holiness of God and wanting His name to be glorified is more than a simple formality or ritual. It is a profound expression of faith and devotion. When we begin a prayer recognizing the holiness of God, we are doing more than simply recognizing His power and authority. 
we are affirming our belief in divine transcendence, in the absolute perfection of his nature. In doing so, we place God at the center of our worship and seek to humble ourselves before his greatness. The sanctification of God's name also involves acknowledging our own responsibility as his followers. In wishing for his name to be glorified, we are expressing our commitment to living according to his teachings and values. We are recognizing that our actions and words reflect not only in ourselves, but also in the name of God. Therefore, we seek to live in a way that honors and glorifies his name in everything we do. Moreover, the sanctification of God's name is a statement of trust in his providence and righteousness. By recognizing his holiness, we are placing our faith in his ability to rule the world with wisdom and love. We are trusting that even in times of difficulty and uncertainty, his name will be glorified and his will will be done. In a world full of challenges and adversity, the sanctification of God's name is also a source of comfort and hope. By recognizing his holiness and desiring his glory, we find strength and comfort in the certainty that we are not alone. We know that God is with us at all times, guiding us and sustaining us with his eternal love. Finally, the sanctification of God's name reminds us of the importance of humility and reverence in our spiritual life. By recognizing the greatness of God, we are reminded of our smallness and limitations as human beings. This leads us to cultivate an attitude of humility and submission before Him, recognizing that He is the only one worthy of all honor and glory. In short, the sanctification of God's name is much more than a simple ritual. It is a profound expression of our faith, commitment, and trust in God. By recognizing His holiness and desiring His glory, we find meaning and purpose in our spiritual lives seeking to live in a way that honors and glorifies his name in everything we do. The request for the coming of the kingdom of God is a prayer present in many religious traditions, reflecting the desire for divine values to prevail on earth. This request is not limited to a simple spiritual aspiration, but has profound and practical implications in our lives, as it reflects our commitment to these values and our willingness to act upon them. The kingdom of God represents a state of complete justice, peace and love, where the divine will is realized in its entirety. As we ask for the coming of this kingdom, we are expressing our hope that the earth will be transformed into a place where God's teachings and principles rule over everything. This implies desiring a world where compassion, solidarity, truth and justice prevail in all spheres of human life. However, this request also calls on us to reflect on what we can do to make this desire a reality. It is not just a matter of passively waiting for divine intervention, but of actively committing ourselves to the values of the kingdom of God in our own lives and communities. This means living according to the ethics of love, promoting social justice, practicing empathy, and contributing to building a more just and compassionate world. Moreover, the request for the kingdom of God reminds us of the transience of material concerns and the importance of prioritizing the spiritual over the material. As we search for the kingdom of God, we are challenged to rethink our priorities and put things of eternal value above temporal concerns. This implies cultivating a mindset of detachment from material wealth and seeking true spiritual prosperity. The request for the kingdom of God also invites us to examine our own lives and to repent of that which is at odds with divine values. We recognize our failures, our sins, and our need for personal transformation. In doing so, we make room for God to work in us and through us, shaping us in His image and empowering us to be agents of positive change in the world. In short, the request for the coming of the kingdom of God goes far beyond a simple prayer. It is a call to action and a commitment to divine values. It reflects our hope for a better world and our willingness to actively work on its realization. In seeking the kingdom of God in our lives, we are contributing to building a more just, loving, and compassionate world in harmony with God's will. The petition that God's will be done on earth as in heaven is a powerful expression of submission to divine sovereignty. In doing this prayer, we are recognizing God's supreme authority over all things and expressing our willingness to submit to his plans and purposes. This petition implies a complete surrender and absolute trust in the designs of God. As we desire his will to be done, we are renouncing our own egoistic desire 
and opening ourselves to what He has in store for us in the world. This requires humility, faith, and a willingness to trust even when we don't fully understand God's ways. As we examine this petition more closely, we can see that it is not only a passive surrender, but also an invitation to become active participants in the realization of God's will. We are called to be instruments of His grace and agents of His will on earth. This implies actively seeking to live according to His teachings and values, acting with love, justice, and mercy in all areas of our lives. Moreover, this petition challenges us to abandon our need for control and to accept God's will, even when it differs from our own will. This can be difficult and painful at times, especially when we face challenges and adversity. However, as we surrender to God's will, we find peace and consolation, knowing that He is in control and that His plans are always for our good. Submitting to God's will also implies trusting in His infinite wisdom and love. We recognize that He sees the whole picture while we only see a part of it. Therefore, we can trust that His plans are always better than ours, even if we do not fully understand His purposes at the moment. In short, the petition that God's will be done on earth as in heaven is an expression of our total surrender and trust in the divine plans. It implies humility, faith, and a willingness to act in accordance with God's values and teachings. As we surrender to His will, we find peace, purpose, and direction in our lives, knowing that He is always with us, guiding us and sustaining us with His eternal love. The request for our daily bread in one of the best-known prayers, the Our Father, goes far beyond a simple request for physical food. It symbolizes a deep trust in God as our provider and an expression of gratitude for the daily blessings we receive. By asking for our daily bread, we are recognizing our dependence on God for all our needs. This refers not only to the food that sustains our body, but also to the spiritual, emotional, and material sustenance we need in our daily journey. We are expressing our faith that God takes care of us in every aspect of our lives and will provide us with what we need at the right time. This request also reminds us of the importance of humility and trust in God. By recognizing that our daily sustenance comes from Him, we are renouncing arrogance and self-sufficiency and surrendering to His will. This leads us to trust His constant care and to live more consciously and confidently in His provision. In addition, the request for our daily bread invites us to gratitude. By recognizing that everything we have comes from God, we are led to cultivate a heart of gratitude for the blessings we receive each day. This helps us maintain a perspective of abundance even in the midst of hardship and appreciate the small blessings that often go unnoticed. It is also important to note that the request for our daily bread implies a concern not only for our own needs but also for those of others. By using the pronoun our, we are reconnoissing our responsibility to share what we have with those around us and to seek the common well-being of the community. In short, the request for our daily bread in the Our Father's Prayer is a powerful statement of trust in God as our provider and an expression of gratitude for the daily blessings we receive. He reminds us of the importance of humility, trust and gratitude in our spiritual journey and challenges us to live more consciously and generously in relation to the needs of others. Mutual forgiveness is one of the fundamental principles of Jesus' teaching and an essential practice for spiritual growth and interpersonal reconciliation. It involves both asking for forgiveness and forgiving others, highlighting the core value of forgiveness in Christianity and many other religious traditions. When Jesus taught about forgiveness, he stressed the importance of forgiving not just once, but repeatedly. He emphasized that we should forgive not just seven times, but 70 times seven, emphasizing the need for a constant willingness to forgive. This teaching reflects the compassion and mercy of God, who continually forgives us and calls us to do the same with others. Asking for forgiveness is an act of humility and repentance. It involves recognizing our own fallibility and the pain we cause others through our actions or words. By asking for forgiveness, we are taking responsibility for our mistakes and expressing a genuine desire to repair broken relationships and restore peace. On the other hand, forgiving others is an act of compassion and generosity. It involves putting aside resentments and sorrows and choosing to release the other from the debt they may have with us. 
Forgiveness does not mean ignoring or excusing harmful behavior, but rather choosing not to let hatred and bitterness dominate our hearts. Jesus' teaching on mutual forgiveness also highlights its importance for our own spiritual and emotional health. He warns us that if we do not forgive others, we will not be forgiven by God either. This does not mean that our forgiveness is conditional upon the forgiveness of others, but that the act of forgiving is intrinsically linked to our own freedom and spiritual well-being. Moreover, mutual forgiveness promotes reconciliation and peace in human relations. It breaks the cycle of violence and resentment, paving the way for healing and restoration. It is a powerful antidote to division and conflict, and a tangible expression of God's love and grace in our lives. In short, mutual forgiveness is a central value in Jesus' teaching reflecting his compassion and mercy. It involves both asking for forgiveness and forgiving others, promoting reconciliation, peace, and spiritual growth. It is an essential practice for a life of authentic faith and for building healthy and loving relationships. Supplication not to fall into temptation and be delivered from evil is an essential part of the Our Father's Prayer, taught by Jesus Christ to his disciples. This petition reflects the understanding of human frailty and the ongoing need for God's protection and strength to resist the temptations and adversities we face in our lives. In making this supplication, we are recognizing our dependence on God to stand firm in the face of temptations that come our way. We know that however strong we may be, we are susceptible to the weakness and influence of evil around us. Therefore, we ask God to strengthen and protect us, enabling us to resist the temptations that surround us. This supplication also reflects our awareness of the constant presence of evil in the world and in our own lives. We recognize that we live in a fallen world where evil is always lurking, seeking to divert us from the path of righteousness and love. Therefore, we ask God to deliver us from evil and guide us in his ways of light and truth. At the same time, this supplication is a recognition of the spiritual battle we face daily. We know that evil is not only an external force, but also an internal reality, manifested in our own weaknesses and sinful inclinations. Therefore, we ask God not only for protection from external evil influences, but also for strengthening our will and purifying our hearts. Moreover, the supplication not to fall into temptation and be delivered from evil is an expression of humility and trust in God as our protector and deliverer. We recognize that by ourselves, we are powerless to resist evil and overcome the temptations we face. Therefore, we put our trust in God, knowing that He is able to keep us and deliver us from evil. In short, pleading not to fall into temptation and be delivered from evil is an expression of our dependence on God's protection and strength. We recognize our frailty in the face of temptations and evil and ask God to strengthen, protect, and guide us in His ways of light and truth. It is a constant reminder of our continued need to trust God and seek His help in every area of our lives. The final praise and worship encloses many prayers and religious ceremonies with an exaltation to the kingdom, power, and glory of God. These final moments are an expression of our faith and admiration for God's eternal sovereignty and are concluded with the statement, Amen, which means so be or truly. In exalting the kingdom of God, we recognize His supreme authority over all things. It is a reminder that He is the sovereign ruler of the universe, whose kingdom is eternal and unwavering. In doing so, we express our confidence in justice and divine government and renew our commitment to live according to His teachings and values. Moreover, by exalting the power of God, we recognize His omnipotence and ability to accomplish the impossible. It is a testimony of His greatness and majesty and a reminder that nothing is beyond His control. In doing so, we find comfort and security in the certainty that He is able to sustain and strengthen us in every circumstance of life. Finally, in exalting the glory of God, we recognize His holiness and magnificence. It is a recognition of His beauty and perfection, which shines with unequaled radiance. In doing so, we are invited to contemplate the greatness of God and to marvel at His infinite goodness and love. The statement, Amen, that concludes these moments of praise and worship is a statement of faith and certainty. It is an expression of our confidence that our prayers have been heard and that God is faithful to fulfill His promises. It is also a declaration of commitment 
indicating our willingness to accept God's will in our lives and surrender to His sovereignty. In short, the final moments of praise and worship are an opportunity to exalt God's kingdom, power, and glory, expressing our faith and admiration for His eternal sovereignty. They invite us to renew our commitment to live according to the principles and values of God's kingdom and to trust in His wisdom and care in all areas of our lives. And as we conclude with the statement, Amen, we confirm our confidence in God's faithfulness and goodness and our willingness to follow His will. Recognizing the depth of this journey of faith and the ongoing search for guidance, strength, and fellowship with the sacred, we have something special to share with you. In the first comment fixed below, you will find a valuable resource for all who wish to deepen their spiritual walk. We're talking about an ebook designed to accompany you through 52 weeks, offering in depth reflections, daily practices, and prayers, all inspired by the rich stories and biblical teachings we've traveled through together. This ebook is not just a guide, but a companion in your journey of faith, helping to illuminate your path with insights and inspirations derived from the heart of the Bible. If you seek a deeper experience of faith, guidance in your moments of doubt, strength in adversity, and a closer communion with the divine, this resource is for you. We invite you to explore it and allow these reflections to guide your steps in the spiritual journey that unites us all. I will leave a suggested video about the story of Elisha, one of the most influential and inspiring prophets. This video not only chronicles Elisha's remarkable achievements, but also delves into the spiritual lessons and impact his life had on those around him. If you seek depth and inspiration from the scriptures, this video will surely enrich your understanding and connection with these millennial teachings. I'll see you in a few seconds.